So I did my presentation on Kawasaki's disease, formerly known as mucocutaneous lymph node syndrome, seen in children. Just kidding. We're gonna do it on the medical Kawasaki. The history, it was discovered by Dr. Tomosuku Kawasaki in 1967 in Japan, where most of the cases are still seen. There he is, handsome guy right there. The first case seen outside of Japan was in 1976 in Hawaii. It is an acute self-limiting systemic vasculitis. The etiology is not known, although they think it's possibly an immunologic response to infections, antigenic substances, that sort of thing. Who gets Kawasaki's disease? It's typically seen in children under five years old and males more than females. Most of the cases are seen in Japan. How cute are they? And it's mostly seen in the winter and springtime, which is when most of the kids get sick. Pathophysiology, four stages of it. The first stage is one to 12 days. That's when the capillaries start becoming inflamed and the heart gets inflamed. Second stage is 13 to 25 days. Um, the inflammation spreads to the larger vessels and aneurysms of the coronary artery can develop. Stage three, 26 to 40 days, granulation starts occurring and the coronary artery thickens. This is when you have high risk for thrombus formation. And stage four, 41 days and beyond, there's vessel scarring, there's thickening, calcification, and stenosis of the coronary artery. The criteria, um, supposed to have at least five of the six following criteria and they must have a fever. These criteria include a fever for greater than five days, bilateral conjunctival infections without exudate, their eyes need to be red like his. Oral mucosa changes, their lips will be dry, cracking, red, their tongue will get what we call a strawberry tongue. It literally looks like a strawberry. Peripheral edema, erythema, and desquamation, you'll see it on the palms of their hands and the soles of their feet. Um, they just turn really red, start swelling, sometimes they start peeling. They'll get a polymorphous rash, usually seen worse in the groin area. And cervical lymphadenopathy, their neck will swell. How does it present? There's three stages. The first stage is the worst stage for the kids. They present with a fever, conjunctivitis, oral changes such as the strawberry tongue, you can see how it kind of looks like a strawberry with the little seeds on the tongue. Um, they'll have a rash, lymphadenopathy, and they will be irritable. There is nothing you can do or say to them that will make them happy. They're just mad. Myocarditis could happen during this time. That's something you really need to look out for. Second stage is the subacute stage. This is when the fever ends, they start feeling a little bit better, but their hands and feet might start peeling. It's not very painful for them. They're pretty much happy. This is where they're at highest risk to get coronary artery aneurysms. You can see the desquamation of their palms right there. It's just their superficial skin layers are peeling off. Third phase is the convalescent stage. This is when the peeling has stopped, the fevers have stopped, all of that has stopped, their lab values are just still out of whack. Um, you'll see elevated ESR, you'll see platelet counts are still high, um, they might still have, be a little bit achy. 
this stage is going to continue until they are completely normal labs and the kids will come back weekly or bi-weekly for follow-up labs. The lab results you'll see, leukocytosis, a high white count because it's an inflammatory response that your body is doing. And increased erythrocyte sedimentation rates. This shows signs of inflammation, so of course you're going to see this. Thrombocytosis. This can cause increased risk of thrombus, which is not good for your heart. And then elevated liver enzymes. Typically on kids, we do an echocardiogram on diagnosis. It's just so we can get a baseline view of the heart while they're sick and keep doing echocardiograms afterwards to just follow up. So what is it? An echocardiogram is a test that uses sound waves to get views of your heart. It shows pictures of your, the heart chambers, the valves, the walls, and the blood vessels that attach to your heart. Why is it done? It's done as a baseline to assess for coronary aneurysms or inflammation of the heart. This is just a little picture of how they do it. Follow-up echocardiograms are done on an outpatient basis to monitor if the heart is changing at all. Treatment plan. They will come in and they will immediately be put on a daily regimen, regimen of aspirin, which is an NSAID. It's a large loading dose. At first you're going to see it and think, no, that's wrong, but it's right. They get a very large loading dose for the whole time they're in the hospital, usually about three to four days. When they go home, they'll get supplemental smaller doses. It's just a one, once daily dose of baby aspirin, and this is to prevent the thrombus formation. And there's your aspirin. They also will get intravenous immunoglobulin infusions. This is used during the acute phase and it cuts down on the mortality rate and it prevents, or not really prevents, but cuts down on any heart damage. We use Tylenol, not Motrin, for fevers and pain. Um, the Motrin is an NSAID, the aspirin is an NSAID. You don't want them to have too many of that. With the IVIG, it is a 10 hour course usually you have to get the vital signs every 30 minutes for 10 hours and then for an additional four hours afterwards just to make sure there's no problems with the child afterwards no reactions anything like that the case study we saw on the floor this year that i personally took care of was a 12 year old patient he was a male and he presented with edema of the ankles and feet he had no edema in the hands whatsoever he had peripheral erythema but only in his feet. He had a fever up to a 101 for three days and occasionally he would spike a small fever while in the hospital. He had the bilateral conjunctival infection, but he did not have any exudate and dry cracking lips. The case study versus the medical research. For the case study, he had a fever up to a 101 for three days prior and about a day while hospitalized. To be diagnosed with Kawasaki's, you have to have a fever for five days. So we diagnosed him just because he presented with some other, other symptoms. He had the bilateral conjunctival infection, which is the same as what the medical research has showed. He had the dry cracked lips, but he did not have the strawberry tongue that we typically see with most of them. He had the peripheral edema of his ankles and feet, but he did not have the desquamation of his palms and his feet. He did not have any peeling in his groin area, he did not have any rash, and he did not have any cervical lymphadenopathy. So it's a little bit different, but the treatment that we gave him worked, so we called it Kawasaki's disease. How can I remember this? Because I know most people aren't going to. It's not, very, it's not seen very often and people don't really see it in adults as they do in kids. picture mnemonics that's how this is just a little picture I found um, sometimes seeing things will help you remember it better 
He has a fever of a 102. He has the conjunctival redness right there. The strawberry tongue, it's not really a strawberry on their tongue, but it looks like a strawberry. He'll be irritable, cervical lymphadenopathy. His feet, you can see that they're red. You gotta remember the heart changes that they can have. Five to 20% can have cardiac complications. There'll be rashes and edema, peripheral edema. I always find these helpful. So that is the end of our Kawasaki's presentation. I've enjoyed it, but see you later, pathophysiology.